Hello and Happy New Year everyone! So for this video I've decided not to do spins as previously mentioned. It turns out that spins in a plane are caused by some complex aerodynamics and are actually quite dangerous in real life. So let's have a look at something which will be much more useful. Today we're going to look at VFR navigation. So VFR stands for Visual Flight Rules. Generally speaking, these are a set of regulations which a pilot must operate an aircraft under and involves the pilot being able to navigate based on what they can see out of the plane in good weather. Under these rules, a pilot is free to fly wherever they like, within reason. They will not be assigned to specific headings, routes or altitudes by air traffic control, however they may still need to comply with certain rules and restrictions. Under these rules, it is a pilot's responsibility to watch out for other aircraft and keep a safe distance away from them. When flying VFR, a pilot will use a skill called pilotage. Good news, you may not realise it, but you probably already have this skill. This is something that you would use to pilot a plane, drive a car or even walk around town. Pilotage is the act of navigating by using visual landmarks. So for example, if you're flying along and you see a, um, a building that you recognise, or a lake, or a mountain, you can use pilotage to work out where you are and which direction to fly. And these landmarks could mean a wide variety of things, from natural features such as lakes, mountains or coastlines, to man-made things like towns, roads, bridges and airports. Because you're using landmarks on the ground, VFR flights always take place in good weather. And when flying VFR, a common restriction you might find is that you need to stay well clear of clouds because these, of course, impair your vision when you're up in the sky. You can use pilotage even if you're in an area that you're not familiar with. When flying, you should have a map handy so you can look for features on the map and then look for features on the ground. Compare the two and work out where you are and then you can then use those to navigate. So I want to give you an example of pilotage in action. First, let me th run through my little flight plan before I start. First of all, I want to say that I'll be flying in an F-18 fighter jet, simply because it's fast and it'll save me a bit of time during the video. I'm going to start at the RAF Kinloss base in Scotland. I'm going to take off from runway 26 and head west. I'm going to follow the runway heading, and the first features I'm going to look for is this patch of water called the Murray Firth, and this little area where the land kind of pinches the water. I know the Inverness airport is right next to that, so I'll fly over the airport, which will be my next feature. Straight ahead of the airport will be the city of Inverness, which again is another feature that I'll be looking out for. When I'm over the city, I'll make a sharp right turn and follow this stretch of coastline again. As you can see, I'll be flying along the edge of the Murray Thurf, so I'll be looking out for that, and I'll be looking out for that little pinch of land again. I'll continue along this coastline and then pick up the next bit of coastline a bit further north. I'll follow this all the way to the top of Scotland to a town called Wick. Looking at the map again, I'll be looking out for this lake and the town itself which sits right on this estuary. And I know that the airport is on the north side of the town so I'll fly directly over that as my next man-made feature. Once I've done that, I'll make a right hand turn and I'll fly directly south on a heading of 180. Technically, for this part of the trip, I won't be using pilotage, but I'll explain a little bit more when I get to it. Judging by what I see on the map here, I should, when I hit the coastline again, I should be just down the road from another RAF base called RAF Lossiemouth. So what I'll do is I'll turn right, follow the coastline again, until I reach Lossiemouth. And then once I reach that uh, airbase, I'll turn left, and I should be pointing straight back towards Kinloss, where I'll land the plane. I'll be running the video in fast forward to save a bit of time, so uh, so let's go and let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are at Kinloss now, so we're just going to fire up the engines and get a move on. So we'll take off now and we'll fly uh, to a couple of thousand feet to start off with. Um, I'll explain why we don't want to go too high uh, in a minute or two. So as we're uh, climbing away from Kinloss, we've got the North Sea to our right and Scotland to our left basically. Now if you look just to the right of centre there you can just about see that uh, little pinch of land there and uh, dead ahead of us is the Murray Firth. Now you can see I just turn left and we're just bringing um, Inverness Airport into view now. So this is the kind of the first the first landmark on our uh, on our little short flight here. So we know from the plan that uh, the city of Inverness is directly ahead of us you can see that 
coming into view just about now, clearly. So, just as we reach the city, we'll make our sharp right hand turn and head back towards the Murray Firth. Okay, and there's the coastline that we're looking for. So you can see that little pinch of land a bit more clearly now, just to the bottom right of the screen. And what we're going to do is we're just going to follow this coastline up as far as it goes. So, the reason that we don't want to fly too high at the moment is because we want to st uh, stay under the cloud layer, um, which is at about 5,000 feet in this video, I think. Uh, because, of course, during a VFR fly, we need to keep a clear uh, sort of visual... We need we need to keep a clear view of the ground, basically, so, uh, so that's why we don't want to go above the cloud layer during this flight. So... Just as we reach the end of this stretch of land here, you can see the uh, the next stretch of land off on the left hand side. So we're just going to make a quick turn just so we can pick that up a bit quicker. It's just a, a gentle turn because at the moment I'm flying about Mach 1. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So there's one benefit of um, of a fighter jet over a Cessna is you can go really, really fast, which is a good fun. So, um, yeah, just as we begin to uh, get closer to the coastline, again, I'll make a gentle turn to the right. Just so we can line up with that and follow that along. <coughs> okay, so now we're just keeping an eye on the land. We're looking out for that um, that small lake or loch um, that, uh, that we saw on the map. So you can just about see it coming into view now on the uh, the left hand side, just underneath where the uh, the speed is, that little box on the left hand side that I had. So once I'm happy that that's where I need to be, I'll start turning towards it now. Just beyond that, you can just about start to see the uh, the estuary. And now, if you look towards the centre of the screen, there you've got the little white buildings there, which are are the uh, airport buildings. So just line up with that now. And there you can see the main runway running left to right across the screen in front of us. So, as we planned, once we reach the airport, we'll do our sharp right-hand turn. All the way around to a heading of 180, heading directly south. So I mentioned before that this part of the flight isn't technically piloted. Um, if you look ahead now, the only thing that we have in front of us is the North Sea. There's no distinctive landmarks anywhere. Uh, for this part of the flight, I'm using another navigation technique which is used in VFR flying called Dead Reckoning or Deduced Reckoning. This is a form of navigation which is used when you can't see any clear landmarks. It's used to calculate how you can fly between different landmarks. So along with calculating your position, it is also used to calculate sort of distance, speed, and time, and fuel usage, and, and other things like that, and also takes into account uh, you know, uh, the wind as well, which can blow you blow you off course and so you can miss your uh, your sort of your where you where you're flying and where where you're aiming to. So now as we are flying along at Mach one you've got you clearly see the uh, the coastline in front of us. What I'll do is I'll just start to descend at this point just to make sure that we stay underneath the cloud layer. And again, because we're travelling quite quickly, what we do is once we're just in front of the coast, we'll begin a, a sort of a gentle turn to bring ourselves in line with the coastline. So we know that we needed to turn right to to reach Lossy Mouth, so we're just looking out for that now. I can see that sort of pale patch of land directly in front of us now. That's Lossy Mouth there, and you can see we've actually lined up with one of the runways pretty well, but we're not going to land there. Just as we get close to Lossy Math, we'll begin our left hand turn, which lines us up almost perfectly with 1B26 back at Lossy Math. So, just as we begin to get lined up, what I'll do is I'll start slowing myself down now. Um, this isn't going to be a proper approach by any stretch of the means, it's just, uh, as I said, it's just a demonstration flight, really, just to show you what pilotage is and uh, how you can navigate using sort of features and landmarks. So just do a couple of last adjustments there, make sure we're on the glide slope just before touchdown. And we touch down. Right back where we started. And then now if you have a look at the flight analysis screen, you can see the little black uh, plane icon in the bottom centre of the map there. And then if you follow the red trail around, you can see that we pretty much um, 
flew our planned route exactly as we wanted to. So, um, so there you have it. That's the most basic form of navigation for you. In the next video we'll look at Dead Reckoning, where we really begin to act like real pilots and incorporate some important calculations into our flight plan and learn some new lingo. The next video might take a while because Dead Reckoning is new to me, so I want to take some time to learn it properly before I do a video on it. As always, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.